Hello everybody, this video is on the two postulates of special relativity. The frame of reference refers to the perspective from which the motion of a particular object is observed or analyzed. There are two main kinds of frames of reference. An inertial frame of reference is a perspective in which an object is moving at constant velocity or is stationary, both of which are without acceleration. A non-inertial frame of reference is one in which the object is accelerating. In other words, it does not have a constant velocity or is not stationary. Two examples of non-inertial reference frames include objects that either accelerate or decelerate in a rectilinear, in other words, straight motion. And this includes elevators when they are going upwards or going downwards. It also includes uniform circular motion. In these type of motions, objects will experience centripetal acceleration. So although the speed of objects remain constant in uniform circular motion, the velocity, that is the direction of the velocity vectors, will change due to the presence of centripetal forces and acceleration. The first postulate of special relativity is known as the principle of relativity. It states that the laws of physics are the same in any type of inertial frame of reference. An example of an inertial frame of reference is a stationary train carriage in which there's a person observing the falling motion of a ball. Since the train is not moving, the person will observe the ball falling in a vertical motion due to gravity. Another example of an inertial frame of reference is that of a moving train. Since the person is standing in the train carriage, he or she will be moving at the same velocity without any acceleration. So if the train is moving at constant velocity, v, with no acceleration, the person and the ball are both said to be in inertial frames of reference. From the perspective of the person in the train, the falling motion of the ball will also be identical to that in the stationary train. That is, it will fall vertically due to gravity. In both examples of inertial reference frames, the two people are making the same experimental observations of the falling motion of the ball. And this is because the first postulate of special relativity states that laws of physics, which includes Newtonian physics, are applied the same way in any inertial frame's reference. So that includes a stationary reference frame and a constant velocity reference frame. Since the experimental observations are made identically, the person in the train, whether it's stationary or moving, they cannot determine whether the train is either moving or is stationary without a reference outside the train. So imagine if you're the person in the train and there are no windows on this particular train. As you observe the falling motion of the ball, because the motion are identical in both scenarios, you will not be able to distinguish between which of the two carriages you're on. In other words, you will not be able to tell if the train is not moving or is moving at a constant velocity. This is the implication of the first postulate. The first postulate mandates that all inertial reference frames are equivalent. If we change the location of the observer so that the person observing the falling motion of the ball is no longer in the train, but standing stationary outside the train. In the scenario of the stationary train, of course, the ball will be observed by the person to be falling vertically because the train is not moving. However, a different trajectory will be observed in the moving scenario. Because the person is standing stationary and not on the moving train, the ball will be observed to have a horizontal relative velocity that is equal to that of the moving train. In this scenario, to the stationary bystander, the ball will undergo a parabolic projectile motion. In the first postulate, the principle of relativity also means that depending on the perspective of the observer, the motion of an object will also be different in an inertial frame of reference. Laws of physics extend beyond Newtonian laws. Laws of electromagnetism also apply the same way in all inertial frames. Maxwell's equations, which govern the laws of magnetic fields and electric fields, are also upheld. And this includes the self-propagation of electromagnetic waves, which includes light. As we discussed in another video, Maxwell's equations can be combined together to calculate the speed of light, or the speed of electromagnetic waves. He showed that this is constant in an inertial frame. So the implication of this law is that the speed of electromagnetic waves should be identical in all inertial frames of reference, 
regardless of whether they are stationary or moving at constant velocity. The second postulate of special relativity is an extension of the first postulate. The second postulate is referred to as the principle of the constancy of light. It states that the speed of light, which is c, is constant in a vacuum for all inertial frames of reference. In a scenario where you again have a stationary train and a moving train, for an observer inside the train who is also moving at the same velocity, the speed of light coming from any sources will be measured at c. And since the speed of light is constant for all inertial reference frames, if the person observing or measuring the speed is outside the train, the speed of light will also be identical, regardless of how fast the train is moving. So if the train were stationary, the speed of light is c, as measured by the stationary observer outside the train. If the train is moving at velocity v, the speed of light is also measured to be c, as by a stationary observer outside the train. A simple thought experiment can be used to understand the implication of the two postulates of special relativity. Let's imagine there's a passenger sitting on the train that is traveling at the speed of light. And on the train, the passenger stands on the rear end of the carriage, and there's a mirror placed on the front end of the carriage. The question that's generated by this thought experiment is that will the passenger see their own reflection in the mirror when the train is moving at the speed of light? Using classical Newtonian physics, the answer is no. Should the person see their own reflection, light has to travel from the person at C towards the mirror and back to reach the eyes of the observer. However, while light is traveling to the mirror at C, the mirror is also traveling away in the same direction at C due to the velocity of the train being the speed of light. So, there is no relative velocity between the two because they're traveling at the same velocity. Using Newtonian relativity, we can conclude that light will never reach the mirror and therefore the passenger will not see a reflection of themselves in the mirror. However, the theory of special relativity disagrees with what's predicted by Newtonian relativity. It argues that if the person cannot see the reflection, he or she will be able to know that the reference plane is moving at the speed of light or greater. Because if the velocity of the train is moving at any speed less than c, light traveling from the person to the mirror will eventually catch up to the mirror and be reflected, so the person will be able to see the reflection. The only scenario in which the person will not be able to see the reflection is if the moving train is traveling at the speed of light or faster. And as a result, if the person cannot see the reflection, he or she will be able to distinguish between a moving and a stationary inertial reference frame. This violates the first postulate of special relativity, which is that all inertial frames of reference are equivalent. So observations made in inertial frames of reference should be identical. Thus, special relativity concludes that the person will in fact be able to see the reflection. And this is consistent with the second postulate of special relativity, which states that light's velocity in a vacuum is always c for all inertial frames of reference. The speed of light originating from the person to the mirror will be equal to c with respect to every object. So although the train is moving at a speed of light c, the light relative to the train and the mirrors and the passenger will be moving at c. This means light will be traveling from the person to the mirror at its original speed, c, and therefore be able to reach the mirror and be reflected to return to the person, allowing he or she to see their own reflection. Thought experiments aid the understanding of the implications of special relativity. Implications of special relativity only become apparent when an object or frame of reference is traveling at a relativistic speed. The term relativistic speed refers to a speed that is at a significant fraction of the speed of light. Since it is very difficult for actual experiments to achieve such a speed, scientists often use thought experiments to help people understand and predict the effects of special relativity.